The barn owl, Tito alba, is the most widely distributed species of owl in the world and one of the most widespread of all species of birds, being found almost everywhere except for the polar and desert regions, Asia north of the Himalayas, most of Indonesia, and some Pacific islands. It is also known as the common barn owl, to distinguish it from the other species in its family, Titanidae, which forms one of the two main lineages of living owls, the other being the typical owls, Strigidae. That there are at least three major lineages of barn owl, the western barn owl of Europe, Western Asia, and Africa, the eastern barn owl of Southeastern Asia and Australasia, and the American barn owl of the Americas. Some taxonomic authorities classify barn owls differently, recognizing up to five separate species, and further research needs to be done to resolve the disparate taxonomies. There is considerable variation of size and color among the approximately 28 subspecies, but most are between 33 and 39 centimeters, 13 and 15 in, in length, with wingspans ranging from 80 to 95 centimeters, 31 to 37 in. The plumage on the head and back is a mottled shade of gray or brown, that on the underparts varies from white to brown and is sometimes speckled with dark markings. The face is characteristically heart-shaped and is white in most subspecies. This owl does not hoot, but utters an eerie, drawn-out screech. The barn owl is nocturnal over most of its range, but in Great Britain and some Pacific Islands, it also hunts by day. Barn owls specialize in hunting animals on the ground and nearly all of their food consists of small mammals, which they locate by sound, their hearing being very acute. The owls usually mate for life unless one of the pair is killed, whereupon a new pair bond may be formed. Breeding takes place at varying times of the year, according to the locality, with a clutch of eggs, averaging about four in number, being laid in a nest in a hollow tree, old building, or fissure in a cliff. The female does all the incubation, and she and the young chicks are reliant on the male for food. When large numbers of small prey are readily available, barn owl populations can expand rapidly, and globally the bird is considered to be of least conservation concern. Some subspecies with restricted ranges are more threat. The barn owl was one of several species of bird first described in 1769 by the Tyrolean physician and naturalist Giovanni Antonio Scopoli in his Annie Historico Naturals. He gave it the scientific name Strix alba. As more species of owl were described, the genus Strix, from the Greek sigma taurosi, Strix, owl, came to refer solely to the wood owls in the typical owl family Strigidae, and the barn owl became Tito alba in the barn owl family Titanidae. Tito alba literally means white night owl, from the onomatopoeic ancient Greek tau upsilon tau, tito, night owl, compare English hooter, and Latin alba, white. The bird is known by many common names that refer to its appearance, call, habitat, or its eerie, silent flight, white owl, silver owl, demon owl, ghost owl, death owl, night owl, rat owl, church owl, cave owl, stone owl, monkey-faced owl, hissing, owl, hobgoblin, or hobby owl, dobby owl, white-breasted owl, golden owl, screech owl, straw owl, barnyard owl, and delicate owl. Golden owl might also refer to the related golden masked owl, T. arantia. Hissing owl and, particularly in the UK and in India, screech owl refer to the piercing calls of these birds. The latter name is also applied to a different group of birds, the screech owls in the genus Megascops. Like most owls, the barn owl is nocturnal, relying on its acute sense of hearing when hunting in complete darkness. It often becomes active shortly before dusk but can sometimes be seen during the day when relocating from one roosting site to another. In Britain, on various Pacific islands, and perhaps elsewhere, it sometimes hunts by day. The owl's daylight. Hunting may depend on whether it can avoid being mobbed by other birds during that time. In Britain, some birds continue to hunt by day even when mobbed by such birds as magpies, rooks, and black-headed gulls possibly because the previous night has been wet making night hunting difficult. By contrast, in southern Europe and the tropics, the birds seem to be almost exclusively nocturnal, with the few birds that hunt by day being severely mobbed. In some cases, an owl feeling threatened by the mobbing of a crow may become aggressive enough to decapitate the crow. Barn owls are not particularly territorial but have a home range inside which they forage. For males in Scotland this home range has a radius of about 1 km 0.6 miles from the nest site and an average area of about 300 hectares, 740 
acres. Female home ranges largely coincide with that of their mates. Outside the breeding season, males and females usually roost separately, each one having about three favored sites in which to conceal themselves by day, and which are also visited for short periods during the night. Roosting sites include holes in trees, fissures in cliffs, disused buildings, chimneys, and hay sheds, and are often small in comparison to nesting sites. As the breeding season approaches, the birds move back to the vicinity of a chosen nest to roost. In a situation where a bird, example pigeon, intrudes an owl nest, a male barn owl is observed to be docile and curious, while a female owl is protective of its chicks and may attack the bird, and the chicks themselves are seen to display a defensive behavior. The barn owl is a bird of open country, such as farmland or grassland with some interspersed woodland, usually at altitudes below 2,000 meters, 6,600 feet, but occasionally as high as 3,000 meters, 9,800 feet, in the tropics, such as in Ethiopia's Diguet Tembien mountain range. This owl prefers to hunt along the edges of woods or in rough grass strips adjoining pasture. It has an effortless, wavering flight as it quarters the ground, alert to the sounds made by potential prey. Like most owls, the barn owl flies silently, tiny serrations on the leading edges of its flight feathers and a hair-like fringe on the trailing edges help to break up the flow of air over the wings, thereby reducing turbulence and the noise that accompanies it. Hair-like extensions to the barbules of its feathers, which give the plumage a soft feel, also minimize noise produced during wing beats. Behavioral and environmental preferences may differ slightly even between neighboring subspecies, as shown in the case of the European T. A. Gotata and T. A. alba, which probably evolved, respectively, in allopatric glacial refugia in southeastern Europe, and in Iberia or southern France. Hunting in twilight or at night, the barn owl can target its prey and dive to the ground. Its legs and toes are long and slender, which improves its ability to forage among dense foliage or beneath the snow, and gives it a wide spread of talons when attacking prey. This bird hunts by flying slowly, quartering the ground and hovering over spots that may conceal prey. It has long, broad wings that enable it to maneuver and turn abruptly. It has acute hearing, with ears placed asymmetrically, which improves detection of sound position and distance, the bird does not require sight to hunt. The facial disc helps with the bird's hearing, as is shown by the fact that, with the rough feathers removed, the bird can still determine a sound source's direction, although without the disc it can't determine the source's height. It may perch on branches, fence posts, or other lookouts to scan its surroundings, and this is the main means of prey location in the oil palm plantations of Malaysia. Rodents and other small mammals may constitute over 90% of the prey caught. Birds are also taken, as well as lizards, amphibians, and insects. Even when they are plentiful, and other prey scarce, earthworms do not seem to be consumed. In North America and most of Europe, voles predominate in the diet and shrews are the second most common food choice. In Ireland, the accidental introduction of the bank vole in the 1950s led to a major shift in the barn owl's diet, where their ranges overlap, the vole is now by far the largest prey item. Mice and rats are the main foodstuffs in the Mediterranean region, the tropics, subtropics, and Australia. Gophers, hares, rabbits, and bats are also preyed upon. Barn owls are usually specialist feeders in productive areas and generalists in areas where prey is scarce. On the Cape Verde Islands, geckos are the mainstay of the diet, supplemented by birds such as plovers, godwits, turnstones, weavers, and prat and coal. On a rocky islet off the coast of California, a clutch of four young were being reared on a diet of leeches storm petrel, Oceanodroma leucerhoa. On bird-rich islands, a barn owl might include birds as some 15 to 20 percent of its diet, while in grassland it will gorge itself on swarming termites, or on orthoptera such as Copiphorini katydids, Jerusalem crickets, Stenopelmatidae, or true crickets, Grillidae. Smaller prey is usually torn into chunks and eaten completely, including bones and fur, while prey larger than about 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, such as baby rabbits, Cryptomys bless moles, or Otomys bili rats is usually dismembered and the inedible parts discarded. Compared to other owls of similar size, the barn owl has a much higher metabolic rate, requiring relatively more food. Relative to its size, barn owls consume more. Rodents. Studies have shown that an individual barn owl may eat one or more voles, or their equivalent, per night, 
equivalent to about 14% of the bird's body weight. Excess food is often cached at roosting sites and can be used when food is scarce. This makes the barn owl one of the most economically valuable wildlife animals for agriculture. Farmers often find these owls more effective than poison in keeping down rodent pests, and they can encourage barn owl habitation by providing nesting sites. Barn owls living in tropical regions can breed at any time of year, but some seasonality in nesting is still evident. Where there are distinct wet and dry seasons, egg-laying usually takes place during the dry season, with increased rodent. Prey becoming available to the birds as the vegetation dies off. In arid regions, such as parts of Australia, breeding may be irregular and may happen in wet periods, with the resultant temporary increase in the populations of small mammals. In temperate climates, nesting seasons become more distinct, and there are some seasons of the year when no egg-laying takes place. In Europe and North America, most nesting takes place between March and June, when temperatures are increasing. The actual dates of egg-laying vary by year and by location, being correlated with the amount of prey-rich foraging habitat around the nest site. An increase in rodent populations will usually stimulate the local barn owls to begin nesting, and, consequently, two broods are often raised in a good year, even in the cooler parts of the owl's range. Females are ready to breed at 10 to 11 months of age. Barn owls are usually monogamous, sticking to one partner for life unless one of a pair dies. During the non-breeding season they may roost separately, but as the breeding season approaches, they return to their established nesting site, showing considerable site fidelity. In colder climates, in harsh weather, and where winter food supplies may be scarce, they may roost in farm buildings and in barns between hay bales, but they then run the risk that their selected nesting hole may be taken over by some other species. Single males may establish feeding territories, patrolling the hunting areas, occasionally stopping to hover, and perching on lofty eminences where they screech to attract a mate. Where a female has lost her mate but maintained her breeding site, she usually seems to attract a new spouse. Once a pair bond has been formed, the male will make short flights at dusk around the nesting and roosting sites and then longer circuits to establish a home range. When he is later joined by the female, there is much chasing, turning, and twisting in flight, and frequent screeches. The males being high-pitched and tremulous and the females lower and harsher. In later stages of courtship, the male emerges at dusk, climbs high into the sky, and then swoops back to the vicinity of the female at speed. He then sets off to forage. The female meanwhile sits in an eminent position and preens, returning to the nest a minute or two before the male arrives with food for her. Such feeding behavior of the female by the male is common, helps build the pair bond, and increases the female's fitness before egg-laying commences. Barn owls are cavity nesters. They choose holes in trees, fissures in cliff faces, the large nests of other birds such as the haymerco, Scopus umbretta, and, particularly in Europe and North America, old buildings such as farm sheds and church towers. Buildings are preferred to trees in wetter climates in the British Isles and provide better protection for fledglings from inclement weather. Tree nests tend to be in open habitats rather than in the middle of woodland, and nest holes tend to be higher in North America than in Europe, because of possible predation by raccoons, Procyon loader. No nesting material is used as such but, as the female sits incubating the eggs, she draws in the dry furry material of which her regurgitated pellets are composed, so that by the time the chicks are hatched, they are surrounded by a carpet of shredded pellets. Oftentimes other birds such as jackdaws, Corvus mondula, nest in the same hollow tree or building and seem to live harmoniously with the owls. Before commencing laying, the female spends much time near the nest and is entirely provisioned by the male. Meanwhile, the male roosts nearby and may cache any prey that is surplus to their requirements. When the female has reached peak weight, the male provides a ritual presentation of food and copulation occurs at the nest. The female lays eggs on alternate days and the clutch size averages about 5 eggs, the range being 2 to 9. The eggs are chalky white, somewhat elliptical, and about the size of bantam eggs. Incubation begins as soon as the first egg is laid. While the female is sitting on the nest, the male is constantly bringing more provisions, and they may pile up beside the female. The incubation period is about 30 days, hatching takes place over a prolonged period, and the youngest chick may be several weeks younger than its oldest sibling. In years with a plentiful supply of food, there may be a hatching success rate of about 75%.
The male continues to copulate with the female when he brings food, which makes the newly hatched chicks vulnerable to injury. The chicks are at first covered with grayish-white down and develop rapidly. Within a week they can hold their heads up and shuffle around in the nest. The female tears up the food brought by the male and distributes it to the chicks. Initially, the chicks make a chittering sound but this soon changes into a food-demanding snore. By two weeks old they are already half their adult weight and look naked, as the amount of down is insufficient to cover their growing bodies. By three weeks old, quills are starting to push through the skin. And the chicks stand, making snoring noises with wings raised and tail stumps waggling, begging for food items which are now given whole. Atypically among birds, barn owl chicks can negotiate and allow weaker ones to eat first, possibly in exchange for grooming. The male is the main provider of food until all the chicks are at least four weeks old, at which time the female begins to leave the nest and starts to roost elsewhere. By the sixth week the chicks are as big as the adults, but have slimmed down somewhat by the ninth week when they are fully fledged and start leaving the nest briefly themselves. They are still dependent on the parent birds until about 13 weeks and receive training from the female in finding, and eventually catching, prey. Unusually for a medium-sized carnivorous animal, the barn owl exhibits our selection, producing a large number of offspring with a high growth rate, which have a low probability of surviving to adulthood. Its typical lifespan is around 4 years. In Scotland, the species has been recorded living up to 18 and possibly even 34 years. A significant cause of death in temperate areas is starvation, particularly during the winter. And with significant snow cover, collision with road vehicles is another cause of death, and may result when birds forage on moan verges. Some of these birds are in poor condition and may have been less able to evade oncoming vehicles than fit individuals. In some locations, road mortality rates can be particularly high, with collision rates being influenced by higher commercial traffic, roadside verges that are grass rather than shrubs, and where small mammals are abundant. Historically, many deaths were caused by the use of pesticides, and this may still be the case in some parts of the world. Collisions with power lines kill some birds, and being shot accounts for others, especially in Mediterranean regions. Mediterranean regions.